you to the Women's Christian Fellowship Summer Luncheon. And thank you for bringing the food. We're just going to dive in pretty soon. So I want you to know that we are grateful to God for the opportunity to have a time of fellowship during the summer. And we welcome all of you who are here to share the fun and the food together and to praise and worship God and hear from Father Mike Berry, our guest speakers, J.D. Carney, Kiki Carney, and Olivia Fergie. We welcome you. We are so grateful to God that you're here with us today. Thank you for coming. They are going to, they're go we have a rare treat in store for us because we're going to hear how God is moving in the power of his Holy Spirit through our Catholic youth today. And they're going to share the ways in which they are victorious over the enemy and how they overcome and live in the power of God's Holy Spirit. So we're going to just um, invite you to uh, hear Father Mike Berry today. Um, before we begin, um, and, and before Father comes up, I just want to say, as you hear the talks today, you know what our theme is. We want to walk in the freedom and know how to, to bring about deliverance in our lives. And we, we have the tools that we have. But we have to remember it is not against flesh and blood that we battle, but against the principalities and powers that rule the darkness. Therefore, God has given us spiritual armor. He's given us a helmet of salvation, a robe of righteousness, a breastplate of righteousness. He's given us the word of God as a sword of the Holy Spirit. And he has given us a shield of faith that we can hold up to put out the burning arrows of the evil one. So as you listen to these talks today, Father is going to talk to us about chaos versus um, order. And so thank you, Father, for coming to be with us. And um, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, pour forth your spirit upon us, so that be the word received in us, and which the word delivered. Keep far from us things that are not of your making, but wanderings, Lord Jesus, intellectual pursuits that lead nowhere. Lord Jesus, anoint the words in the heart of each and in the heart and ears of each listener so that they may grow, Lord Jesus, with you, without me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I have a little commercial uh, before I begin. Uh, this is a book I put together, pictorial uh, images of the apparitions of the Blessed Mother throughout the world, throughout the world. Um, there's about 53 of them. There should be 55. I'll talk to the Pope. He wouldn't use it <laughs> there's, a, there's two more that should be forthcoming. That is Garaban Dahl, or as they say in Ireland, Garaban Book, and uh, of course Medjugorje. Okay. So uh, this is, um, I'm looking for a donation for $10. Uh, so if you don't have the donation, Steal the book anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it says in Psalm 94, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Mm -hmm. I did a, a mass of generational healing recently. Do you know Jesus? And everybody said, they do. Good. And of course everybody lied. You know your Jesus. But do you know the Jesus of the Gospel? In the book of Genesis it says, you know, God made the world in six days. You know? And people said that there's a six chaos, or six long, uh, hundred year terms. No, they're days. So it says, in the, the rising of the sun. But the idea of what God made, and God made, and he saw that it was good. It is good. Your own worst enemy is yourself. Your own worst enemy is yourself. And you do a job in yourself. You compare yourself with other people. God doesn't compare you with anyone. With Psalm 139, you're fearfully, wonderfully made. St. Teresa of Calcutta said, <clears throat> your greatest sorrows are your greatest joys. Yeah. About two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I had a, a tough week. I went to the dentist years ago, and I, he said, this, 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 have to go. I said, well, what about, you know, root canals? He says, that's the problem, there's no root there. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I said, will I ever be without teeth? He said, no, you'll never be without teeth. He lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> about three weeks ago, <clears throat> they were putting in the final teeth, and uh, I got there, and the dentist said, 
I were putting in the final tea today. I said, I don't think so. Oh, no, no, we're all ready. We're all ready for it. So, anyway, you couldn't fit them in. So they had to take more impressions, all of that. <coughs> all that stuff had to go on. And, uh, so they put in a temporary. I went down the street about uh, half a mile. Didn't get something to eat. And didn't as I know I was going to eat the, the temporary. It just came out right away. Mm -hmm. So I was like Bugs Bunny for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I went in to get gas. And uh, this person was panhandling, so I gave him five bucks. And I went in, closed the car, went in, got the, paid for the gas, pumped the gas, and this gal who panhandled me, she said, can I give you a hug goodbye? Oh, uh -oh. You were there? <laughs> <laughs> and she reached over me and grabbed my wallet. Oh. Oh. So, so so it was a happy day. <laughs> I lost, <coughs> there was no money in the wallet. Because mm -hmm. I'm that wise. <laughs> and she, uh, all she had was cars. So we cancelled them all right away. And, so, and the license was in there. So uh, all of that stuff. And Social Security was in there. And the vaccine was in there. So. But she was a good operator. She, she knew exactly what it was. Can I hope to buy? No. But God. When he made the world and he made each one of us, we're fearfully wonderful in him. We're unique. We're the best person we can be if we can only realize God's order in our lives. And that's one of the primary, primary things to see. God is a God of order. God is a God of order. He made them male and female. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <laughs> so he made us in that way that Order is always in our lives. Order is always in our lives. But what we have done recently is not only lost the order, but lost a whole lot of things that really fit into God's order. There's no sin anymore. We have taken sin out of the world. The confessions are empty, you know, because people feel, well, I'm not sinning. But we need to see, you know, the power and the presence of God. You know the scripture, it's in Gethsemane. They came looking for Jesus, okay? a small band. It wasn't a small band, it was a legion. At least a hundred people, if not more. And they say, you know, are you Jesus, are you Jesus? And Jesus answered, what? I am. What is that? I am. That's Yahweh, Yahweh, God, God. See, we miss many times what God has for us, what God has for us. Each day, it is what God, the Christmas hymn, do you see what I see? We need to see what the Lord is showing us, what the Lord is showing us, rather than to see what we want to see, what we want to see. And uh, so many times, you know, the whole sense of the order of God. Husband, wife, children. The husband is head of the wife. Okay. She has to do what he says. So, give me a beer, honey. <laughs> not more than that. It's things that, again, may conflict, may conflict, and especially, you know, in our day and age, when we have women, acting like men and men acting like women. The absence of fathers. And that's not their fault because then they haven't been trained to be fathers. They haven't seen the spiritual effect of, 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 of a father. I was watching a video recently and this little girl, she was one minute old. One minute old and she was crying. And her father said, no, no, I'm here for you, I'm here for you, I'm here for you. And she stopped. Aww. Six minutes later, six minutes later, she cried again. And he said, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm your daddy, and I love you. Her eyes opened up and stopped. We need to hear the voice of God. Mm -hmm. We need to hear God saying, you know, that doesn't fit into your life. I don't know how long it is since, excuse me, I've seen a movie. 
<laughs> never seen a movie, not even on television. And people say, oh, this is the best movie yet. This is the best movie yet. I'm deprived. <laughs> you don't see that. And now I'm, I'm losing interest in television. Mm -hmm. Because spiritually, we're fighting, as Angie said, not a fight against flesh and blood, but against whole movements. Whole movements. You know, for instance, there's a fact that you think you know, but you don't know it. It's a lie. There's never been a Catholic in the White House. Catholic president. We've never had a Catholic president in the White House. How about John Kennedy? Do you think he was Catholic? Uh, Marilyn Monroe says he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we had, the, in the first uh, Continental Congress, we had Catholics, the Carls, the two Carls, from Maryland. So the Lord has taken care of us. You know, we have a bunch of young people together here today, and they're a witness. Okay. Unfortunately, on their shoulders, you know, rests the whole future. Like I said, it never comes from the top. It always comes from the bottom. From people who have been convicted, convicted, you know, convicted of God's love, of God's love. God's love is there. And if there's disorder in your life, if there's disorder in your life, a lady, uh, some years ago, came, she said, you made my daughter cry. And I said, well, I only stopped her once, you know. <laughs> I said, yeah, I said, she's living with someone. You raised her up differently. Well, I defend my daughter. I said, you're defending sin? She said, no, I'm not defending sin. Of course you are. Of course you are. And this girl had a, an experience, a conflict, living in this type of a situation, you know, and, and again, you know, it's, it's, it's commonplace. It's commonplace. I had a, a woman some years ago who said, would you pray for my fiancé? I said, well, what's, what's wrong with him? He wants to go back to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> so there's contradictions in our lives. And we run up against them. We know. We know from God's order, it doesn't fit in. Okay? What, the, what are the things that fit in now? Anger. Hatred, bitterness, judgment, all of them, they fit in, they contradict a loving God, they contradict a loving God. Uh, as uh, Olivia today, if she knew of Claire, Claire Brockton, she was an Irish girl who was into movies and television and all of that. And she was going to bed one night and she looked at the crucifix. He did it for me. Okay. She had two experiences of that. So she wanted to join the convent. Now think of it, girl from Northern Ireland, and they speak very differently from, from us who are in Southern Ireland. Okay, they swallow the words all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to, you know, to kind of record it and take it down afterwards. <laughs> and she worked in television in England. But this thing was gnawing, gnawing, gnawing at her. It was. He did it for me. He did it for me. So she went from Northern Ireland to Spain, a language she didn't know. And she joined the sisters. And she said, well, I'll be uh, a sister actress, a non-actress. And she was very successful. She drew an awful lot of young people to herself, all of that. And uh, eventually, uh, she was killed in the earthquake in Peru in 2016. So God has a plan on your life. It's a plan on your life. Look at, look at uh, Jonah. How far away he ran to get rid of God's plan. That's the, he's the owner. He has the owner's manual. So again, it will be order. It will be order. Your chaos can be all around you. But the order is God's order. And begin to identify it. What God has for you is greater than what you have for yourself. You know? So to understand it in that capacity. Because I I fought with God for nine years. Most of you know that story. 
Nine years I fought because my father died when I was in the seminary. He was the only one who wanted me to be a priest. My mother wanted me to marry the girl too, two doors down. She was a nice girl. Uh, yeah, she was very nice. <laughs> Why would God take my father, the only one that wanted, never saw my day. Never saw my day. His last words to my mother was, you know, I won't see my boys there. And he did. But finally, God made a mistake. God made a mistake. Why do we blame God for everything? Mm -hmm. He's the biggest one we can blame. So, rather than sorry, begin to see what God is doing. And it's wonderful. It's wonderful to behold, to see what, what the Lord is doing. So it took me nine years. If I love God and love my Father, they're one the same. Love. So an awful lot of things you have to let go. Forget unforgiveness is a deadly sin. Okay, why? Because it doesn't affect the other person. That girl who stole my wallet, mm -hmm. she's going to have difficulty, you know, sort of going around with the wallet of a priest and she's a woman. Mm -hmm. So you have to let go. Let go. No, I won't. It's, you know the trouble she calls me? I had to go to the Chamber of Horrors. <laughs> you know what that is? Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Three hours to get a replacement. Oh. Wait, you can do it online. Yeah, I tried online. No, we're close today. Mm -hmm. so, but again, just see how the Lord penetrates. I am, and I am is in your life. He's a God of order. He's a God of order. And again, that's what's going to prevail. That's what's going to prevail. No matter what, you know, what they're talking about, they have a reset, you know. And that has happened years ago. It's called the Passion, Death and Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Okay. Did it go too, too, too long? <laughs> What a blessing it is to have Father with us, yes. uh, always there for us.